Scott, and finally, Golazo. And let's begin with the first event, Bullseye. Here's the idea. You got 60 seconds to fire in as many balls as you can. But the point is, you got to knock out the four targets located in the four corners of the goal. All right, it probably helps if you put the shot on net. All right, I'm not going to win this competition, but check out guys like Tamox Suarez of the Dallas Burn. This guy's got pinpoint accuracy, and you'll see a lot of that during this competition. Up next, the long distance kick. The idea? Kick the ball as far as you can, all right? Three competitors from each team will line up two balls, and they'll just line up and whack it. All right, that's a pretty good kick, actually. The ball must cross midfield in the air to even get points. And no, this is not golf, so you don't count the roll. It's just where the ball lands. Ideally, you'd want it to land in the middle of the field, because that would help your score. I think I got a hernia or something. <laughs> the rapid fire should be a wild event. Here's the deal. You got 12 balls lined up around the arc. You got 20 seconds to score as many of them as you can. Two little twists of this one. You got these normal balls, right? You get two points if you score on them. And then you got these four, I'm getting taunted by the crowd. Then you got these four money orange balls here. You get five points. Oh, I mixed it up on you. You get five points if you put them in. Here's the second twist. Goalies can earn 25 bonus points if they can pull up stops like this that Tony Miola did in a recent MLS game. The fourth event is the power shot. The object, hey, hit the ball as hard as you possibly can. Eight competitors from each team line up in the penalty spot and crack it like this. Bam! 68 is a pretty good score. In fact, some of the guys might have a tough time beating that, but not guys like Johnny Hart. Check out this cracker. Scores could be up in the mid to high 70s. And we'll conclude with Golazo. And here's the deal. Each participant in the box, three balls will be flighted in. The object, well, he can only one time it towards the net and attempt to dance with judges, get as many points as possible. Now, the ball need not go in the net to get points, but, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt. Uh-oh. Oh! All right, that one was a little high and a little long, but check out Brian McBride. Man, this guy can finish. Check out the sweet bicycle kick. Brian will be one of the competitors for Team USA. When we return to Disney's wide world of sports, we'll introduce the starting lineup to Major League Soccer's All-Star Skills Challenge and begin our first event, the Bullseye. The All-Star Skills Challenge today, here they are. First of all, He's a Swedish goalkeeper. He has the second most international appearances in world history. Number one, Thomas Ravelli. He's a Czech defender with a deadly right foot on free kicks. Number five, Robos Kubik. A Salvadorian midfielder ranks second in assists in MLS. Number ten, Mauricio Cienfuegos. Hello. Hola. He's a midfielder, scored the lone goal in the MLS Cup for 1997 for Colorado. Number 11, Adrian Paws. A Bolivian attacker, ranks fourth in the MLS in, with 11 goals. Number 9, Jaime Moreno. Next up, a Brazilian forward. He's second in the MLS in goals with 13. Number 19, Welton. And last but not least for the world all-stars, the Salvadorian all-time goal-scoring co-leader in MLS history, currently with 52, number 21, forward, Raul diaz Alce. And now it's time to meet the Americans. He ranks number one in MLS with goals against average, number 18, goalkeeper, Zach Thornton. One of 14 players participating in the third All-Star game. Defender number 12, Jeff Agus. He's the 1997 Big Defender of the Year. Number 23, Eddie Pope. He's the only player to lead two teams, San Jose and Colorado, in goal scoring. He's a forward. He's number nine. He is Paul Bravo. He was named 1997 Honda Most Valuable Player of the Year. He's known as a god to his fans. Number 11, Precky. The second leading scorer for the Colorado Rapids. Midfielder, number 10, Ross Hawley. He was the number one draft pick in the 1996 inaugural draft 
He's a forward, number 20, Brian McBride. And he is not competing today, but he is an inspirational leader, number 15, Roy Lasseter. Now, there was a huge parade on Thursday of this week, kicking off the big all-star weekend down here at Walt Disney World. And John Harks joined our Rob Stone. And as fate would have it, yes, John Harks was the uh, co-grand marshal with Marco Echeverri. You hear like those ears? Yeah, they look very good on you. You're here to provide some colorful color commentary. Yeah, right? it's, uh, it's great to be here, Rob. Uh, tremendous facility, great players out there. We're going to see some skills, and I know these players very well. Yeah, you know them real well. So we'll be able to take some pot shots when it's necessary and hype them up. Of when course, that's what we're here for. Exactly, here. We want, we want to stroke them. Here's the, the first event, the bullseye. You got four targets, upper corner. You have 60 seconds to knock out all four of them using the fewest amount of balls as possible. The tiebreaker, the guy who hits him in the quickest amount of time. Coming up first from L.A. and from Brazil, Welton. This guy's been on a tear scoring-wise this year. Look at that, one for one. He's taking it. This is a lot tougher than it looks. He's got the low ones. There's a little bit of height on that one. Ooh. Tough hitting the serve balls, too. It's a lot easier when the ball's stationary. Ooh. Yeah, he's not spending too much time on that upper left corner no, target, not, is he? He's not going on that upper left at all, Rob. I think uh, goalkeepers will know which uh, is his favorite top corner and three kicks here. You can always do some research through these events, right? He's done time well with the bottom ones, I'll tell you. <laughs> time winding down. Well, he hit two targets, and that's the number to gun for so far. 50%, that's not bad, I guess. That's not bad. It's actually very difficult trying to uh, hit the upper corner like that, especially when you're under pressure from this crowd, Rob. Coming up for Team USA from the Columbus crew, it's Brian McBride. I think this guy would probably prefer if the balls were slided in and he could head him towards the corner. He's a very dynamic player. He, they've, they've, he's been known to uh, you know, perform like Evil Knievel once in a while out in Columbus. Uh, he's dangerous. And with the new hairdo. I like it. He's a very handsome man. <laughs> He's got that sheepdog hairdo that's coming down in front like that. I love it. Oh. Come on, Brian. Come on, Brian. We, we're supporting you up here, buddy. <laughs> we're in your corner here, friend. That, ooh. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you put a goalkeeper in there, he hits him every time. This is one of those frustrating events. You miss your first 10, you're like, all right, let's just, let's, let's just stay the end. You gotta start hot, there you go. They all seem to be working the low corners, don't they? Yeah, he's doing very well though, Brian. Uh, there he is. I have confidence in him, Rob. I think he's gonna take this one out. He's got two balls left. All right, he's got another ball. There you go. Another 50% player we're seeing. I'm sensing a theme. I am as well. No one has hit the top upper corners, and next up to give a crack at it, Mauricio Cienfuegos from the World All-Stars. Good look at Brian. Picked off the lower targets, as had Welton. Mauricio, no stranger to the all-star competitions. His third straight appearance here. He's complaining. He thinks he has a referee on the field. That's what it is. He's complaining <laughs> about the referee, but there isn't one here. Here he is. He's starting off now. Boom. Good little start for Mauricio. So why aren't they going for the top the top ones? I, th I think it's a confidence factor here. You get the first two on the bottom, and then you can, uh, you know, Mauricio needs to lean, lean back a little bit. Um, you know, he's trying to get under the ball here. 
Mm. He's very close to the ground, which gives him good balance. <laughs> No one has gotten the top upper corners yet, and Mauricio looks like to be continuing that streak. Getting a little too much under those. My money's on Jaime Moreno. I mean, I'm a little biased there, but he's very are. good at free kicks. Uh, we share them in, uh, in training back and forth, but... Ooh. Two more balls left. Yeah. Me over the ball, right? Man, you got to get yeah, it down. That's what it is, and uh, I think the upper corners have to be struck, Rob. I mean, we need somebody really to, to break the ice here. And uh, so now, if you were doing a little this, ball, well, what would you be doing? Would if, you be going top shelf first? If I, I would be pinging him very hard, I'd be driving him, driving him hard, no bending, no spinning, just driving the ball into the top, hitting the bullseye straight. You know, now, if I was out there, is, is it placement it. or power, or is it a little mix of both? It's a little mix. Uh, I like to vary my game, as you know. That'll boy. <laughs> Ross Pauly, a first-time All-Star here from Colorado. He's under pressure here, Rook. We'll see how the Rook handles the All-Star skill celebration. Oop. Again, everybody going low from the outset. You know, in this situation, Rob, people aren't really looking at the server. And I, I, I have to say, there hasn't been very good servers out there at all. I mean, <laughs> Who's serving out there? Paul Bravo, his teammate from Colorado. There he goes. Paul got an assist on that one. Oof. Almost two in a row for Ross. Oh, he's bouncing over it. That's the thing. See the opposite corner there? You got to drive it low. Nice camera angle there, though. He's switching him up here. He's making, uh, he's making the keeper work who's not in there. Ross needs one to tie the leaders. He's got more posts than targets, I think. Two seconds. Mm. All right, that'll conclude the first four competitors here at the Bullseye. When we return, the conclusion of the Bullseye Copy World of Sports, where in addition to all the soccer this weekend, there are AAU baseball and basketball championships underway. Well, after four kickers, everything is tied up at two. Ross Pauley received a fortuitous scoring change, and he was credited with hitting two targets up now as one of your former teammates, Raul Diaz Arce, now with New England, who is tearing it up early. He is very early. He's very accurate. He's got a lot of support out there as well, Rob. It's all about support, isn't it? That's what it is. It's a confidence thing. You, you got a little support up here in the TV booth, don't you? I love it. It's good to be up here with you, Rob. You got, you know, it, I'm not talking about an honor. me, man. It's an honor. <laughs> You're backing me here. The sincerity oozing through your oh, pores. Right. I appreciate it. The two former uh, United players hooking up here. Jaime Moreno serving for Raul. Nobody has hit top shelf yet. Ooh. Oh. You know, Rob, we might have to have you uh, get your boots on and get out there, buddy, and finger a few top ones. You know oh. I'll lace them up. Well, Raul started out of the gate hot. Went low and picked off the low ones early. Great replay here. Look at that camera angle. Love it. Perfect shot at the bullseye by Raul. And guess how many targets he hit, John? I'll give you one guess. Uh, two. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> Everybody has hit two, so it is up Hello. to Frecky of Team USA. If he hits three targets, he will be the winner of the bullseye competition. My name is Preki. Uh, yeah, let's give us, give us Preki, a quick Preki impersonation. My, I, Preki, I cut the ball so much on the field, I cut the grass. They have to have people come and fix the grass <laughs> every day in training. I cut, I cut, I cut. The first lefty oh, competitor. He's not fooling around today, Preki. He has been known to have opened a can of tuna fish with that foot, by the way. <laughs> He's got two. He's off the mark. Now let's we'll see if somebody can get up top. He's got a handful of balls here. Ooh, I'll tell you what, it's all about the server. See, Eddie Pope, he's just slowly delivering that ball. Now. Eddie is taking his job pretty seriously. He is. And Look at him, he's focused. And you know how, you know, foolish Eddie can be sometimes in public, <laughs> you know, how outspoken he is. Come on, Prexter. All right, give me an impersonation of what Prexter's saying right now. I can't believe I'm so tired. I am only 35, but I'm very tired. Oh, my God. 
If I can get back to my room and eat. <laughs> one more. All right, I got one more after this one. Oh, and the time expired as he unleashed his final shot. And guess what, team? He hit two targets as well. I don't think he's happy with that, Rob. He's walking off the field shaking his head. He's, he's not too happy. Look at Brecky. He's very... He's a disciplined player. He, he knows he should have three or four there. So all six competitors, three from Team World and three from Team USA, all end up with two targets apiece. And Carlos Diaz is with Roy Laster, one of the guys who's not playing in here. But I think Roy could probably knock off a few more than two targets. Well, since it was a big tie, you know, we couldn't interview all the players, so we thought we'd go with the, the inspirational leader. Why couldn't anybody hit the top shelf? I don't know. Maybe because I wasn't out there hitting it. <laughs> See, it's easy to say that when you're sitting uh, on the bench. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. The ball is moving, and the players have to adjust their run, so it's kind of tough to do that, especially in the upper 90s. Okay, well, I think the best performance that we just saw was John Harks and his imitation of some players out there. Guys? Well, thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, thanks for that plug there, buddy. I appreciate that. I know Roy Lasseter would be happy with that, uh, you know, shooting on target like that. All right, Carlos now with Raul Diaz Arce, who actually has been named the winner of the bullseye competition. Well, yeah, he, he's been named the winner, but uh, Raul, the todo inglés? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Español. <laughs> See, yeah. it's tough to interview a winner when he doesn't know what you're saying. What, was it a tough competition out there? Uh, I think so. Uh, I, I, I hope the world, world team wins. See? That, that's about as much Spanish as I know. So, you know, he's, he's doing pretty well. He hopes the world team wins, Rob. A riveting interview. <laughs> Thank you very much. When we return, the long-distance kick from Disney's Wide World of Sports. It's the All-Star Skills Competition. We're in Lake Buena Vista, Florida at Disney's Wide World of Sports, the site of our MLS All-Star Skills Challenge today and the NFL Experience, which tests your skills all year round. Event number two, the long distance kick. Let's take a look at the rules. Basically, the idea is just kick it really hard. <laughs> Boom it. <laughs> we Boom can it down the field. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a ride. The ball has to sail over midfield to even be counted, and this is not golf, so if the ball rolls, it doesn't count. It's where the ball lands. And the tiebreaker closest to the center line. Up first, Jaime Moreno. Looks like Jaime's got one at about 60 yards. No good because it landed outside of the yellow line. So Jaime on his second attempt. Trying to get the point. That looks good. What do you say? We'll eyeball that one and what do you say? I think he's uh, 58 yards there. Looks like uh, about 58. Now, one of your teammates, one of your buddies, Jeff Agus, kind of the dark horse of this event, right? Yes, I, I think so. I mean, Goose loves to pile drive a ball, basically, during the games, Rob. He loves to hit that switch as far as he can. And as you can see, he has the Conan the Barbarian look going right now. It's a very good look. Yeah, it's, it's a sign of strength. We've been talking a lot about And what style. did I call, buddy? Holy... <laughs> Goose just crushed that one. 69 Crush yards. Uh, John Harks, uh, what's the longest you've seen Jeff Vegas crush one? What do you think? I think he can get, I definitely think he can beat that. I, I'm, I'm still calling uh, 75 into 80. 75? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He's just warming up right now. You're a gambling man by nature. Let's see what we got. Mm, nature would call me that. Sorry. Goose taking his time there, playing to the crowd. Ah, uh, that's drifting wide. He hooked it. Just a bit outside. <laughs> but a good Sweet. outing. Bada, bada, bada. <laughs> he comes in at 69 yards, and he's your leader. Coming up next, the first of two goalkeepers, Thomas Ravelli of the Tampa Bay Mutiny. Goalkeeper's been taking a lot of goal kicks lately. It'd be interesting to see what uh, Thomas has. Yeah, I, I, I really don't think they have his competition in Sweden. But uh, he's going to adjust his game right now. And he's going to focus straight down the middle, I believe. Okay. You sure they don't do this in Sweden? I, I, I don't know. I'm going to live. That's going to beat Jaime by a schmidge. I don't think Jaime's going to be happy with no. that, really. Having Jaime, was a, Jaime was a late addition to this event. 
59 yards, Thomas in second place. He's limping over there. I don't know, he might have pulled something. What, for the world? Ravelli just turned 20 last week. <laughs> Good wood! Oh. Good wood! Yeah. In a tiebreaker situation for second or third place, that one just about hit the middle line. 64 yards it's going in the books for. Very good accuracy on that one, Rob. Still five yards shy of Jeff Agus, your leader. And, and here comes the little man. <laughs> Look at the size of this man. Zach Are you Thornton, kidding me? He wasn't born. He was chiseled. <laughs> Holy gosh. Okay. He wasn't happy with it. Actually, he's wearing his boots that he has on today are two sizes too big. And, and how will that affect his kicking? Well, obviously, it didn't help him in the first one. But I think his accuracy is going to be better for this one, Rob. Very astute observation, that one's going to be drifting wide as well. So Zach Thornton not bringing much to Team USA's table on that test. Well, you know, with Bob Bradley, our assistant coach, going to Chicago uh, for this season, I know he likes to work on goal kicks quite often and loves to push him to the right. So Zach's got that in his mind. He's thinking Bob's watching, Bob's watching, and he has to stick it out there. It's that insight we've been looking for. That's why we're so happy to have you here, John. Well, as I said before, I'd love to be here with you. Who votes Kubik from Chicago Fire? Right at about... 59 and a half, 60. 59 yards, 59 yards it is, tying him. Well, actually, right about third <laughs> Look at place. I know he's thinking, what is what going on I right do? now? We don't do this in Czechoslovakia. Quality player for Czechoslovakia. Played in the European Championships in 96 as well. Deadly left foot. I love that it. one's better. Wide of oh. Thomas Rebelli's boot. I'll tell you, I don't know. I thought that was a little bit... Uh, I thought he was even with Ravelli there. 63 yards, so again, American Jeff Agus of DC United, your leader, Thomas Ravelli of Tampa Bay in second place. And our final contestant, your buddy, Eddie Pope from DC United. Here comes George, George Edward Pope. Not a, people, not a lot of people know that. That's his, uh, his real name. I was not aware His of that. first name is George. So you've been reading the media guides prior to this. Uh, Good work. Well, Team USA is going to win this event. See if Eddie can get him some more points. He's got plenty of distance on that one, but he's got a little hook on it, Rob. That would have been good enough for second place. However, it was outside of the yellow lines, and that's all she wrote. Jeff Agus, your winner with 69 yards. What has he got to say there, Carlos? It, the distance or the accuracy, you know, kind of going between the pylons here? Uh, it was neither. I closed my eyes and, and prayed for the best. And uh, <laughs> good Lord willing, uh, we hope we can help the ball club today. This, this is a soccer game, not a baseball game, by the way. <laughs> can I, uh, well, we're just going to take it one game at a time. Exactly. Right? And the good Lord willing, you hope exactly. to win this thing. Exactly. What, was, uh, did you, were you intimidated at all by the people that were around you, or did you just go up there and hit? Well, I know the strength of uh, Mr. Ravelli's foot is uh, world-class and world-renowned, so uh, I know I had some tough competition. And uh, I know I just had to hit it as hard as I could because it would have been tough. Him. Mr. Ravelli, what do you think about that? I tried to trick him. I see his shoelaces were open. <laughs> and he was looking for it. But it, there was right before I hit the ball, too. Yeah. See, I, see, it's help. Tom Foolery going around here, guys. Tom Foolery. Guys. I, didn't, I didn't know Tom was working on our broadcast. Is he working here today, Tom? He's, he's probably cutting into my paycheck. There's your uh, long-distance final results. Jeff Agus, your winner, collecting 35 points for Team USA. And then it's two worlds. Our third event, Rapid Fire. The rules, pretty self-explanatory. You got 12 balls curled around the top of the arc. The idea, score and do it quickly. The goalkeepers must stay within the six yard box, but they can receive 25 bonus points for their team, depending on their performance. Now, there's gotta be some type of strategy involved in this, Rob. I would think that the, uh, the five point balls would be able to be struck very low, just like that, and maybe lob the other ones. Paz has got Zach Thornton on the run right now. Wow. That Good little round by Adrian Paz. I tell you, Colorado has recovered so quickly from that injury. Uh, he seems to be injured here. He's hobbling a little bit, but he's, he's, he sucked it up and he's out there. 14 points, not a bad uh, outing. And we were discussing the strategy prior to this event. 
hit the, uh, the, the two-point balls or the white ones wide, suck the keeper out, and then when he got the power balls, if you will, yeah. just tuck them on in there and get five bonus. Yeah, exactly. Try to chip the other balls and get some height on it and uh, drive the, uh, the big points, the money balls. It's all about strategy these days. Up first for Team USA, Ross Pauly, also from Colorado, taking on Thomas Ravelli in the net. First good strike by Ross. Oh, he's got the bonus. He's all over. This boy can score. Thomas Ravelli. He is not messing around. They don't play this in Sweden, uh, do they? Yeah, I don't think Portugal's going to be the one to beat. <laughs> All right, oh, well, Thomas well, caught on at the end, but Ross Pauly, a nice little flurry of goals to start off. You got the calculator out there, Rob? I was a math major, as far as you know, so as far as you know, the points are coming any second now. There's your replays. Ross Pauly just floating it over Thomas Ravelli. Thomas kind of more concerned about his positioning on the next shot rather than hunting down. If you notice Ravelli, ball. he keeps looking at somebody in the crowd. I don't know what's happening there. He's not happy with that performance, nah, he's Rob. Not, he's not he wants that one back, or four back, or five. Pauly with 23 points. Up next, Jaime Moreno. You were giving Jaime some nice little taunting before this event, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was, I was trying to get him involved. His enthusiasm is very important to this event. And there he is. He's done the... He is spraying them all over the place. A fortuitous bounce there off the corner. But that won't be enough to surpass Ross Pauly of Team USA. I think well, he's a little exhausted there. He's holding his heart. <laughs> Do we have any cardiovascular surgeons out there? Let's get somebody to check that out. There you go. Throw on that hat. You're going to be having those sausages before you come out in the field there, Jaime. I mean. It's never a good move. He might be. I don't know. Here's our lefty and our friend Preki from Team USA. Ah, uh, Preki, I got to score everywhere. He starts off doing just that. Oh. No points for hitting the post. <laughs> Unfortunately for Frecky. Ravelli's almost got a look of disdain on his face. Oh, he put he? the money ball in and he's got Ravelli all over the place. Didn't start off as, as well as he would have liked, but finished very strong. Frecky finished strong, ended with 11 points in the rapid fire contest which has him in fourth place after four competitors. There's Ravelli just steering one aside, and then Precky curling in the Dayglow orange fluorescent ball. <laughs> Up next, Raul Diaz Arce, the winner of the bullseye competition. And here he is during rapid fire. I'm sure the players must think they're getting points for hitting the post from the crossbar. Perhaps we'll need to clear up the, the rule book on that one. Huh? I'll tell you what. Got some great finishes here. Yeah, he's not messing he's around. He's got sacked down, but he's doing it with the wrong ball. Three, one, Tries three. a little cheeky chip there at the end. Zach's not buying it. Eight points. <laughs> Which has Raul in last place right now. Thorne's Ross been Pauly. doing very well in goal, by the way, Rob. The big guy working the box gets down on the money shots. Well, Team USA is going to win this event as Ross Pauly is, uh, as of now, in first with 23 points. And here comes Paul Bravo trying to add to that. You get kind of discombobulated, don't you? Running back and forth, hitting, moving back into position. I, I think the best thing to do is, like, don't even look at the goal. You just keep striking it and keep striking it to get a rhythm. I mean, when you start looking to see if he saved it or not, I mean, that kind of throws you off the game. <laughs> Just two points for Paul Bravo, but Carlos Diaz is with our winner, Ross Pauly. Ross, was it was it luck or was it skill? Do you have a game plan going in? Oh, completely skill, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I tried to get him going one way and just place it in the other corner, keep him going back and forth and keep him on the ground. And, and it worked. When did you come up with this game plan? About a second before I got up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we didn't know what we were doing before this, but I just got up there and uh, placed them in the corners. Well, you nailed three money balls, so it's safe to assume Ross Polly is pure money. Ross Polly, your winner of the rapid fire competition. Team USA starting to move up the leaderboard. We'll return to Disney's wide world of sports after this.
to Major League Soccer's All-Star Skills Challenge from Disney's Wide World of Sports. And after three events, Team World with a 30-point advantage over Team USA. You and I, John, need to work on our math. We had miscalculated that one. We did, actually. Uh, I think we're just going on the main winner for each there, event instead of actually totaling all the players that are, are competing. That's our problem. All right. Uh, event number four, the power shot. Get out the jugs guns. These guys are going to be drilling it here. Eight players per team. Each guy gets two cracks at the net. The top six players determined by the fastest shot. It's good to see they bought, brought in a state police officer in the back of the net there. Holding those guns. <laughs> Raul Diaz Arce of Team World, his first crack, coming in at 69 miles per hour. That's okay, but I think he's, uh, he's mid-70s material. I think he's uh, ready to increase that, Rob, at the moment. I don't think he got enough on that one. Yeah, 66. No. And he's going to the corner as well. He hasn't really directed that straight down the middle. Right, this one is semi about placement. It's got to go in the net, but you probably want to gun it right at... The speed guns would be my logic. I would think so. Big Zach Thornton lumbering into the box. Let's hope the net is sturdy enough to hold this one. My lord. <laughs> lord have mercy. <laughs> Two miles per hour. Uh, that was a tad stronger. Uh, than apparently the Zach has some hidden vendetta <laughs> against those balls, huh? I think he's a bit upset from his long distance kicking. Uh, <laughs> not as accurate and he doesn't need to be here. Oh, as you can see. Heads up behind the Zach, net. I hope my car's not parked out there. Oh, Robbie, hit your convertible. <laughs> There's baseball fields all around here at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex saying heads up for fly balls. They're hoping that Rick Gooder, the trainer, uh, is out there. Uh, somebody's knocked out. Nice little plug there, huh? Sorry. Nice little plug for Rick. Mauricio Cienfuegos of the LA Galaxy and Team World up for his first attempt. He's very serious, by the way. Did you see that? Game face. All business. Apparently, he, he needs to be a little more business-like at 60 miles per hour. He's in last place. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Mauricio likes to place the ball more than actually strike it. That one had a little more juice on it. It's a good finish, though. Or I could be wrong, too. <laughs> 58 miles per hour on that one. So Zach Thornton of Chicago running away with this one after three competitors. He's in first at 82 miles per hour on the power shot. Up next, Ross Polly. This guy's like in every event. Ross is excited, and uh, I think it's uh, mainly because of his hairstyle. He's an excitable young man. 69 miles per hour on his first power shot attempt. What See do you think look? of the blonde? Do you like the blonde? Or is, is that natural or is it white? Because that's serious blonde. It's white. That's borderline platinum. Good work. You got a good strike there. 72. The second best score yet. So Team USA looking like they're going to get some points here. Ross is enjoying himself. This is kind of a fun little vacation for him, isn't it? Of course. He gets to excited. hang out with guys like John Hart. <laughs> there you go. Why wouldn't he be excited? Here's the second goalkeeper in this competition, Thomas Ravelli. I'll tell you what, I hope the speed gun did catch that. Now, does that not count at all? Though? No points. No points for that. He's got one more crack. You're a spectator behind that goal. Look out. Heads up. Thomas, just keep your head down, buddy. Knee over the ball, focus. There you go. Good strike. 72. Thomas has done a pretty good job. He had a good outing in the long distance kick. And now he's in second place. But there's your current leader, exactly. the goalkeeper, the Power Man. Man. I killed the ball every time I kick it. Eddie Pope and the crowd chanting his name behind the net. See what Eddie's got in store for us. Good effort by yeah, Eddie. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> 71. You know, we really can't say until we find out what it is because we've been wrong. We can assume, times. though. It's the angle we have here, Rob, I think. It's all about angles these days. Eddie looks good with that stud in his left ear, doesn't he? I, I think he's, yeah. Good, good comment. I'm not adding to that at all, please. 71, so he's consistent, if anything. Zach, he's holding on strong. Eddie at 71 miles per hour on both of his attempts. Up next, Welton from the Los Angeles Galaxy.
53, so you're supposed to shoot it well, not pass it into I that. think somebody told them back passes. We're working on back passes here. But, uh, you know, these guys make sure they got to warm up properly. They might be pulling something yeah, for, the, for the game tomorrow. <laughs> We're joking, but it's true. There you go. I mean, you're swinging your lumber all you got out there. So an improvement of 10 miles per hour from his first shot, but 63 miles per hour is not going to win him too many points. And he's grimacing. Yeah, he's not happy. He's, he's limping. Again, Zach Thornton, your leader, hanging out with Carlos Diaz. I'm sensing an interview. But first, Brian McBride. McBride's not going to, you know, let that go away easy. 75, I'm calling. 64. 64. 64. That's all right. Let's, I'm let's, way off. Let's try me on this one. Let's see how close you can get on Brian's second attempt. Call it before he strikes it. Before he strikes it? 71. Good call. Not bad. Not bad, John Hart. 69, though. 69. So an outing of 64 miles per hour and then a 69. Zach Thornton of Team USA again in the lead. And we we'll have sure we explained to Precky that it's no bending and curling of the ball here. Just just ping it in as hard as you can. That's a good little snap. 71. Ties him with Eddie Pope for fourth best. They're making him do extra work as well, like chase the ball down and then bring it back. Teamwork. I mean, that's an extra three, four yards, Rob. The world all-star trying to, trying to drain his energy pool there. Precky's better than that. Oh, we got to hold it that one. 72, an improvement of one mile per hour, which ties him with Ross Pauley and Thomas Ravelli for third, or actually for second place, all trailing Zach Thornton, who clocked in at 82 miles per hour. Lubos Kubik coming in here. You like him, don't you? Lubos, quality player. I do like him. He's a very, uh, I didn't realize he was this tall. Yeah, he's a monster. He's a big man. And I'm surprised he's striking at righty, too. He has a deadly left foot. First attempt, 63 miles per hour. He actually told hour. me before this he was saving the left foot tomorrow. But obviously, he's that's, changed his mind. That's the insider information that only you, John Harks, can bring to us. There you go. He's not happy with the placement of the ball. Glance back at the field. That's one of those, you know, John McEnroe shots. Look back at the court and blame the court, you know? It's all the court fault. It's all the court fault. Back-to-back <laughs> 63s. And here comes Jeff Agus from D.C. United. Uh, it's Boomer Agus, by the way. Boomer. All right, let's go with Boomer. He's got a big approach run here. Oh, he's not happy about that. I think that. he took a divot on that one. I think he did. He has to replace his divots, doesn't he? To get extra 55. bonuses. 55. Zach Thornton, some... Ouch. Some, uh, some taunting, huh? I don't know, but Goose's ankle ligaments just went over <laughs> the crossbar. <laughs> Somebody retrieve those, please. Look I at those. He, he look really those. wanted to get a hold of that one, didn't How he? How about the calves on Goose? Well, yeah, he fills them with sand every day before he comes out. Sandbagger. 68 miles per hour. He's not happy. Right nah. now he's thinking, I'm stronger than that. I know I am. Just two more competitors left. Zach Thornton right there, your leader. He struck the ball at 82 miles per hour, then struck one out of the stadium. Up now, Jaime Moreno from D.C. United. Good strike. Yeah. 70. 70 on his first attempt, which is uh, pretty good, actually. He's not really known for his power, is he? It's more the finesse and the finishing. He's, yeah, he's a finesse finisher. Struck that well. 73. Good enough for second place right now. A late burst there by Jaime Moreno and Team World. Not happy about that, Rob. USA, we're running away hey, with you can't it at be that a, point. You can't be a homer, buddy. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Come on, Bravo. Come on. <laughs> Paul Bravo, Team USA, the final competitor of the power shot. That's not, not fair. No, someone's throwing something at him from the crowd. Did you see that? No, I'm they're, they're distracting him. No score because he missed the net, his second and final attempt. That's not going to win. 70, a good outing, but not a good enough to surpass Zach Thornton. Let's take another look at the crack by Zach. That was very well said, by the way, Did you Rob. like that? That's why I get paid the big bucks, John. Good little wing, and Zach Thornton joins our own Carlos Diaz right now. Well, first off, let's look at Zach Thornton's thighs. Look at how big this guy's thighs are. They're bigger than my waist, Rob. And they're bigger than your waist, too, I have to say this. But 
Zach, what is your secret behind having such powerful legs? So I have a big butt. I just try and get try and get my legs and my butt behind it and then try to hit it as hard as I can. That's the first time I've ever had an athlete admit they have a big butt on camera. What are you thinking about? What are you imagining that ball is when you kick it? My keeper coach, and I'm really, really tired, and he's like, four more, four more. I imagine his face is on the ball. I'll try him as hard as I can. Great job, Zach. And uh, wait, Rob, this, this just in. The, the second ball that Zach hit over the crossbar, it, it, it just landed. Just landed, really. I yes. thought it was still in orbit. Team USA, Zach Thornton, the winner of the power shot. Once again, take a look at the winning kick as we head to break. That's not the winning kick. That's the one that shattered some car windows. We'll be back to Disney's Wide World of Sports. Coming to you from Disney's Wide World of Sports in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. After four events, the World All-Stars have a 10-point advantage as we head into the final competition. Golazzo, right, John? Golazzo. Golazzo, I like that. It means goal in Italian. As Jaime would say, que golazzo. <laughs> what a goal. Here's your rules, and this one is kind of complicated, so pay attention. Three shooters and one goalkeeper per team. Each guy in the box gets three attempts to make a spectacular shot on the net. There are three celebrity judges who will obviously judge his score and give you the points there. The goal, the ball does not have to go in the goal to get points, but it probably wouldn't hurt. Up one, Jaime Moreno. That's not going to get a lot of points. No, he wasn't very. He, he wasn't ready for that. Three points, a round of ones from the judges. Tough crowd. Here's his second attempt, Adrian Paz, servicing. I, I could be a two. <laughs> Let me tell you, that is a friendly seven points for Jaime Moreno. His final attempt, Goodwood just wide. I think Jaime liked that one off the shin. Seven. Wow. 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 Tiffany giving a seven. <laughs> no, no, wait, we're changing it. Oh. 16 points. Mario's going very low with the four there. Thomas Rongan staying in between. Thomas Rong, uh, Thomas Rongan. A little tough handing out the numbers, isn't he? Uh, I've, uh, yeah, Big critic. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so Jaime Moreno's Highest score is 16, and that's what will go down in the books, his first two attempts. Don't amount up to much of anything. Ross Polly up. Oh, that was a little bit of an acrobatic guy. Which, which should get him style points. I think style points are good. And there they are. No, nope, wait, we're adding points as we go. 17, which already eclipses Jaime Moreno's top mark. Brian McBride serving. Two up-and-coming youngsters from Team USA. Mm. Nice save by Ravelli, but what a crack by Pauly. Well, you see, uh, that was a great effort by Pauly. And, uh, the judges, I don't know if they're talking over there, Rob, but uh, <laughs> they they're, all standing, they're all sitting on the fence there. Let's all give eight, all give eight, all give eight, okay? <laughs> and there it is, and here comes Ross Pauly for his third attempt. Great outing by Ross Pauly. His first attempt, 17 points. Number two, 24. And this one, come on, judges, work with us here. Ted, Ross, he's got a golden smile. Here's his second attempt, which has him sitting on top of the leaderboard right now. It earned him 24 points. Good ups on this one, huh, John? Very good ups and, and great, great distribution by Brian McBride. But look at that. Feet over the head, great. And he put Dynamic it on, player. He put it on net, but Thomas Ravelli there to deny. Ravelli still thinks he's getting bonus points for these saves, Rob. That's why. They do this in Sweden during the summer months. Did you know that? Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, he's not happy with the service. What? Mauricio Cienfuegos of the World All-Star Servicing Adrian Paz. And uh, I don't think that's going to count. The judges are Yeah, reading their non-verbals. Big yeah, question marks on the foreheads. Oh. Got under that one. I think the judges want to see the bodies in the air and hit the turf. Yeah. That pretty much guarantees some points in my book. I don't know if the players are uh, willing to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> think, uh, the first one didn't count, the I guess. The first Rob. one did not count because he did not elect to strike it, so that went in the books as a big zero. His third attempt came in at 13, and that's his best mark. 
after three players. Ross Pauly of Team USA in front with 24, followed by Jaime Moreno at 16, and then Paz with 13. But coming up now, Paul Bravo. And Ross Pauly, the leader right now, will be sending the balls in. Remember, Ravelli has his back to the play to start with. Nice save by the old man. The Tampa Bay Mutiny keeper backtracking very nicely to catch up to that one. 20 points for Bravo in his first attempt. 17 there on attempt number two, and here comes his third and final. Shot on net. Great ball into the box, and there's a side volley. He might get some good points for that. Probably middle of the range. Now on those flight is Thomas wrong, and I'll tell you, he is very difficult. He's, he's giving out fives. Five, five, five. That's all he's given, Ron. He's stingy. 17, the highest for Paul Bravo, and it came on this attempt. But check out the great defensive work by Thomas Ravelli. Hunting it down and knocking it out of the net. And he's making sure that he's not running into that post as well. After four competitors, only two left. Team USA holding on to first and second place. They look like they might be in good shape to take over the lead. Great Welton. E Great effort there by Welton. Here comes Welton's second attempt. He's positioning that body like he wants some air time. And he gets it. He likes that one. 16 on his first, and this one, 19 points if you do the math at home. And the final one. Or Welton. And he wasn't too sure about that, the old hop, skip, and jump routine. A gratuitous 16 points for Welton on his third attempt. His Welton. best one, number 19, on his second attempt. Look at the face on that man. He's showing a lot of pain, a lot of anguish there, Rob. Something going on on the field that we don't know about. I have to get Carlos Diaz on that one. Brian McBride, the final competitor. Team USA is wrapped up first and third as of now. That's going to get him some points, though, I have a That'll feeling. That'll get some points and a bad back. Now look at Thomas <laughs> Rogan hanging tough with the five points. 18 points on his first attempt. Thomas is two. just waiting for any New England players to step up there. Brian seems pretty set on trying uh, he this is. style of a shot. I'll tell you one thing, Bravo's not helping him at all here. He's pinging balls very hard, <laughs> sticking him long and far, and uh, Brian's making it work. Oh, oh boy! I like that. He's looking at the judges. He's staring down the judges after that one. That one should go. And they liked it. Some serious points. 28, 28 points. 28 points. Ryan McBride, the individual winner of the Velazzo attempt with 28 points on his final attempt. Let's take a look at his final crack. Left his feet, and look at that. Straight over the head. Good landing, too. You know Brian is... Uh, comfortable with doing that and Carlos Diaz is standing by with the winner Brian McBride of the Columbus crew Brian did it help that you saw everyone else and what they did and you knew what you had to do to win it did it actually helped more that I got to serve a few balls because I was able to tell Paul that I just wanted it up above my head and uh, he put him perfectly there you know you're risking concussion though coming down on your head every time yeah, I've, I've been hitting the head a lot, and I think this ground's a little softer than some elbows and some heads that I've hit, so I wasn't worried about that. I was on the bench talking to some of the players, and they said that the hitting of the head on you might actually do you some good in the IQ department. Yeah, you know, they they took a, a CAT scan on me oh, okay. after I got a concussion. And Did they, they said, find anything? No, that was a problem. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, this is like the slam dunk competition, so I guess I'm talking to a combination of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Guys? Wow, that's quite a little association for Brian. I'll tell you what, right. Brian's happy with that. There's the winning kick, just hitting crossbar. It earned him 28 points and first place in the Golazzo tournament. Brian McBride, pleased as well as he should be. When we return, we'll have the final standings from Major League Soccer's. Hey, Mike, good game. What you had it off to? Wide world of sports, and there's your final result. The USA a come from behind victory, 320 to 280. Let's kick it down to Carlos Diaz for the trophy presentation. Well, we're here with uh, Roy Lasseter, and, and Roy, we, we've got the trophy right here, and uh, I, I'm proud to say that you are the first winner of the official All-Star Skills Challenge. Way to go. Thank Big hand for everybody. Who's the MVP? Well, 
today I think my teammates are going to give the, the trophy MVP to Ross Pauley. Ross Pauley, get Ross up here. Hey. Ross, you've got to be just uh, emotional right now. Oh, yeah, I'm about to cry. I mean, it's, this is amazing, you know. Seriously, seriously. I mean, I've got one question for you. What's with the hair? You know, I, no, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not sure, so I'm not going to answer that. Well, let's bring let's bring Precky in here. Precky, you now come here, come here. You you were showing us some left here. Can you can you give us a you can see that? I don't know. I, do it one more time, real quick here. Can we get yes? Very nice. You want right or left? Uh, well, either one, Precky. The one you use. Cause, cause, uh, <laughs> from what I hear, Precky is a god. So and and finally, last but not least, was a god today. He was the god today. Let, let's get let's get the oh, man with the most the powerful yeah, yeah. legs in there. Yes. yes. Okay. See, this is the first time ever that we're actually interviewing legs. Uh, what does this mean to the team? Well, I think it just shows the uh, good old American know-how. You know, the die-hard effort. I think that's what that shows today. Okay. See, see, the the U.S. team is uh, is pumped down here, guys. And let me just let me just grab this real quick. But the All-Star Skills Competition Cup is right here in America. Way to go, guys. Hey. Um, I'm excited, obviously. Um, I just, I really want to say thank you to all you guys for coming. It's, uh, what a great day, and, uh, it was very memorable for all of us, so thank you all very much. Good crowd on hand for the six-event MLS Pepsi All-Star Skills Challenge. It began with Air Soccer, the final, the East taking on the central team of Dima Kovalenko and Brian McBride. First touch is the key in this event, Rob. Beautiful first touch by Kovalenko, leaves them deep. They get the winning points. Central out to an early lead. Next up, the youthful final, the fastest man, DC Santino Caranta. Dima Kovalenko of the Central and the West, Landon Donovan. I think the crowd wants me to win this one. Dima Kovalenko, very quick off the blocks and quick with the ball, but there's two parts to soccer, Rob. Look at Landon Donovan with the extra gear we've seen all season. Landon got off to a bad start, but made up for it down the stretch. The West and the Central were now tied. Next up, the three-part goal Olympico will begin with the corner kick. Must go in on the fly, Jean Wilmar Perez from the Columbus Crew. <laughs> I think he watched me in the warm-up. Upper V, Rob. That was a beauty. I knew you were going to get that in somehow. Yes, Dave Durr nailed a couple of those. John Spencer taking on the wall. Yep, found side netting there. And then Luis Hernandez in the chipping. Phenomenal. I'm watching half the players. They cannot do this the easy way. He goes behind the back. This is beautiful. Great skill. Good looking shots, but not enough for the win. Next up, the goalie wars. This one is a war. Joe Cannon taking on Zach Thornton in the final. This is probably my favorite event, Rob. Four ways you can score in this event. You can volley it, you can half volley, you can take it from the ground, or you can throw. Joe Cannon's got a twin brother in pro baseball. Looks awful good. Yeah, the arm worked well for Cannon as he won it. Next up, grip it and rip it with the power shot. Steve Jolly from the Metro Stars. I'm rooting for the defenders. They don't get to win anything in the All-Star game. 73 on his first attempt. He actually went for 75 on number two, Joe Cannon here. Ties him at 75, so they split the points. Next up, our final event, Bullseye. Landon Donovan. Pegging Styrofoam downstairs. Again, now trying to go up top. Joe Cannon doing a little talking to the ball for him. He takes it. I think this is it. I'm already jumping up and down. Can't believe it. One more time. Oh! Good points and good enough to give the West the overall title as they win the MLS Pepsi All-Star Skills Challenge.